welcome to Altitude, the show that's just for you, for high school students and others that are seeking maybe careers in science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics. This show is hopefully gonna shed a little light on some of the backgrounds and careers that many of our guests have that you may find interested in pursuing. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's show. With me again, as usual, is our, my favorite sidekick, DJ Mickey Breeze, or AKA Mickey Breeze. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> you know, that's how we stay up. We got to keep it moving, Most keep it definitely. motivated, right? Most definitely. So it's kind of hard to, to keep that level of energy going all the time. I know <laughs> whenever I see you perform, and I know you're going to talk a little bit about a lot of your performances, but um, it's that energy level, man. How do you keep that energy level up? And uh, it's most definitely a little bit difficult uh, between, you know, just all the ins and outs of having to get to the show on time and dealing with the weather outside and yeah. everything like that. But um, a lot of it is just mindset, you mindset. know, just trying to keep a positive mindset about how the day is going to go. Well, you love what you do. I know we don't have to repeat that because you got the passion for the music. Man. Almost definitely. And I think you have a lot of followers that got passion for your music. <laughs> but hey, look here. I just heard something. I went to the Sugar Hill Gang concert. And, you know, I had a chance to talk and meet with a lot of people, but I mentioned your name. It's like one person who was kind of not in the industry said, oh, Mickey Breeze, yeah, he's new. He's the brand new hottest <laughs> thing out. He's got the thing. You know, how do you, how do you respond? You're like an overnight success, right? You want to share a little bit about how you became an overnight success? <laughs> overnight is a bit of a stretch. And uh, uh, the whole people hearing of me and the reputation thing definitely has its ups and downs. For example... Um, a lot of what I've been trying to deal with as far as like putting my name in the industry or at least putting my name in a lot of the club scene around here mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of what I'm associated with. Mm -hmm. You know, not necessarily, I, I don't have anything bad attributed to my name, of course, but um, a lot of what my image kind of was built around was my age at first. So I might want to perform in a 21 plus club or might want to perform in a stage that's, you know, mainly based around adults and everything like that. But because people might hear my name and go like, oh, I've heard of him. Mm -hmm. The number one thing associated with it is, oh, he's that young DJ or mm -hmm. he's that young new DJ and everything like that or that young new performer. And it's, you know, it's definitely a, a, a benefit and a disadvantage at some times. But for the most part, uh, it's really good to have people knowing my name and just uh, having an overall positive interpretation of what it is that I do. Sure, sure. So do you still move your equipment and help? What do you do <laughs> yeah. behind the scenes? I mean, what oh, is the work definitely. effort behind all of that? What is, it, what is a typical gig like for you? Okay, so a typical gig is, you know, basically writing my own contracts, uh, setting up you know, just any sort of meetings or communication with a client that might want me, whether that's for DJing or trying to rap or donating my time and a bunch of different things that go into it. So a lot of paperwork, one. Mm -hmm. uh, two, you know, obviously just mapping out my transport and figuring out timing, you know, trying to calibrate with rush hour traffic and other stuff like that. Uh, and just figuring out when I'm ready to get out the door. And then uh, lastly, <laughs> being my own roadie. <laughs> Being my own roadie. We have to uh, do what we have to do, right? We got to make do it what happen. we got to do, mm -hmm. most definitely. Yeah. So any um, any upcoming things you have going on? Because I can, well, let me back up one quick second. Is I truly appreciate that hustle and that grind because I, I think a lot of people do look at people in media, maybe on stage, and they say, oh, man, that must be wonderful to be them. And on one hand, I'm sure it is great to be Mickey Breeze, right? That could be your own <laughs> show. It's great to be Mickey right. Breeze. But, you know, you, you just outlined all those things that, like, a high school student really needs to focus in on. They have right. to do their English. Right. You didn't mention finance, but I know you have to, in that contract, oh, you have to calculate the money. You got to at least be able to add, subtract, and multiply and, and do percentages. And all that sort of stuff. You got to do your bookkeeping so that basic accounting is good, as well as all those other disciplines just to do what you do and to be as successful as you are. So it definitely isn't an easy path. And, you know, there's a lot of respect in the hustle for the, the entrepreneur, right? Of course. So, um, well, before we wrap up, what do you got coming up on the horizon here? So very, very soon, uh, I am in the process of getting a lot of my merchandise together. Okay. Uh, I've collaborated with uh, True Heads Clothing by Neil Taylor, um, Kamani, Kamani Beard of Summer Cypher and Elements by Kamani. 
um, and Southside Customs in order to make my own line of merchandise. I have dog tags coming out, I have earrings coming out, I have shirts coming out, I have hats coming out and everything like that. Man, is that a new release? Do I get a, what is that called? I get we'll a, get you, we'll I get, get you, the first we'll get you a, that exclusive. I got an exclusive <laughs> announcement on the Power of IT Minnesota STEM we'll Altitude most, Show. We'll All most right. definitely get you some merch down here. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, so and, laughs> free, <laughs> complimentary. <laughs> I got you. All right. And then here in the month of November, I have a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of shows coming up in the uh, next couple weeks and some really big club shows at uh, the Ice House mm -hmm. uh, on Nicollet and the Basement Bar in downtown Minneapolis coming up at the end of the month. Now, how about 2020? Anything, I know you performed at Soundset in the mm -hmm. past few years and all that. Anything out on the horizon into 2020? I'm trying my best to try and network and work on getting me another uh, slide at Soundset 2020. Okay. Um, I'm officially in talks with a couple of learning organizations known as Big Bang and Deeper Learning Conferences mm -hmm. and everything like that um, because they want to bring me out to South by Southwest again this year. Yep. Um, and yeah, just a lot of good stuff on the horizon as far as, you know, trying to set up and maybe hopefully potentially get out of state or out of country sometime soon. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you for taking your time to come into the wonderful SPNN studios here. And uh, you have a wonderful day today. You as well. All Thanks right. for having me. Hey, no problem. <laughs>
uh, the owner of the company also owned the building. Uh -huh. So like, I had to tar the roof. Oh no! You know, the, yeah, like that the building and, maintenance. Yeah, thing. like repair the parking lot. But so when there wasn't computer work to do for uh -huh. customers, you had to do. The he was finding thing. miscellaneous stuff for me to do. So he put you to work. Put me to work, but it taught me a lot, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the work that I was asked to do it was like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. Right. I've never done it before, but it it helped build character. Absolutely, absolutely. It definitely helped build character. And then I've been in help desk jobs before. Like, mm -hmm. that's kind of the starting point for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And no one wants to sit there and answer calls all day and, and, like, do tech support. But, again, it builds character. Would you agree with this statement that a lot of uh, software people generally start in that customer service help desk area and a lot of hardware people go, like, the A-plus certification route and work behind the scenes and the break fix or the like the help desk the, the yeah I've, I've, I've seen a lot of that you know like software developers might start out like doing QA or testing stuff like that that's you know the kind of jobs that that folks don't want to stay in for a long time mm -hmm. um, or they're just kind of getting started mm -hmm. and then yeah and the hardware or what I like to say the infrastructure side mm -hmm. typically start out with maybe like a plus type jobs or like like I was a PC tech Okay. Right. So I was building computers, building servers, mm -hmm. and kind of started there, um, or maybe even help desk. Yeah. Just kind of work your way up. Trust me, you're giving me flashbacks. Uh, you know, I was in IT for so long. I remember all those things. Matter of fact, I had to count mail in the mail room before the the word processors and all that stuff to help justify the Wang word processor. Yeah. I had to count like a hundred mail slots out to regional offices and independent <laughs> reps, and figure out how much mail was going out to see if they could afford to pay for. The word processor and the word processor was bigger than this room practically so but anyway that's this story isn't about me it's about you right <laughs> so steve um today's high school graduate you know that maybe is going to come out they need to start preparing now so this audience is 11th and 10th and 9th graders is there any particular big thing whether it's you know software studying python maybe or JavaScript, or should they focus in on A-plus and hardware? Is there anything in the industry that leads them to those higher-paying, higher-end jobs like cloud you know, server analyst or server support administrator or developer, right? Can you give any advice on that? Yeah, so like <clears throat> back when I was starting out, there wasn't a lot of like IT programs in, in high schools, mm -hmm. and there is now. Like a lot of high schools offer different classes. Mm -hmm. And I would say try a little bit of everything yep. because at that at that age you may not know if you want to be a, become a programmer or go on the infrastructure side or maybe you want to be a database person or maybe you want to manage like big projects right mm -hmm. who knows what you might want to do sure you still have a lot of time ahead of you sure so try a little bit of everything and then kind of figure out start to look at what jobs are out there in the careers and understand what people are doing in those careers mm -hmm. and then again figure out where you want to go and that may change over time, and that's okay. But figure out how other people reached like that status, and then work backwards from there. Love it. Like, okay, this person's a CIO. How did they become a CIO? Mm -hmm. What certifications did they have? What jobs did they have before they became a CIO? What kind of education do I need to have? Do I can I go to a boot camp? Mm -hmm. Do I need that four-year degree? Yeah. Do I need A plus cert? Do I need to go learn Python? Right. And once you kind of study how that person made it to where they are, work backwards from there and apply that towards your own career. Well, that's a perfect segue. So what do you do today? What is your career? Um, so today I'm a, so I'm a, I'm a cloud architect. Okay. Um, and Very so good. I work with like Fortune 500 companies and help them move to cloud or help them with like DevOps. I do a variety of different projects. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah, that's um, I lead like teams of onshore and offshore folks and mm -hmm. I do a lot of stuff. So what kind of titles, you talk about leading <clears throat> teams, because that's one of the things we talk about in our Power Up IT sessions is being able to manage or communicate with people across the globe, around the time zones, right? So how many, like, tell us like what a typical, you know, very briefly, are you on the telephone? Are you on video conferences? Are you up at two in the morning? Are you in Jap Japan? You know, where are you at in the world when it comes to a typical managing your staff or time zone? Yeah, so I'll give you a very consultant answer. It depends. 
<laughs> right? So I could tell you were for a big fortune. <laughs> Yeah, so big, big. so every day is like different, right? I might be up at 6 a.m. because I'm on calls, mm -hmm. I'm on meetings. I might be up at 10.30 at night, I'm on a call, mm -hmm. um, or I'm doing some sort of work, or day might end early. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends. Um, I work from home a lot, mm -hmm. which is awesome, especially when you live in Minnesota. Yeah. And the <laughs> especially with right the weather with, that we get in the winter, right. like the snow and the blizzards. Uh, but sometimes I have to travel, and it depends, right? I've been... I've been uh, working with clients where I'm like in Tampa, mm -hmm. uh, Tampa Bay, and I'm sitting in an office overlooking the ocean, and that's my office for the week, right? Incredible. But I've been in other places where you're, you're literally like out in the cornfields. Sure. And you're struggling to find a place to eat sure. for lunch, right? Yep. So, uh, so it depends. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> but every day, is, every day is different. Sure, sure. In your teams, I'm just curious because this has come up as a common theme in some of the other interviews. Do you find yourself being the only person of color in those types of situations? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, yeah. that's that's whether it matters. But that's yeah. that's the industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's changing. It's slowly changing, but that's mm -hmm. the industry. Sure, sure. Now, the company I work for, we actually have a a, a black CEO who's oh. a woman, which is that's amazing. And so the company I work for, like diversity and inclusion is not just a checkbox, yeah. right? Yeah. Like we're saying this so we can look good in the it's markets. It's a human experience. Right. It's just exactly who you are. It's a human experience. So, but um, on our teams, there, there is a fair amount of diversity, but it still has a long ways to go. Sure, sure. Right. And that comes up like the students that, you know, we typically address are all from a variety of different ethnicities. And so it's really important that they understand that part of this too is developing their own hustle, their own technology, their own portfolio of skills so that they can stand on their work, right? So, because times have been changing and it's just not a gimme that you're gonna come out of high school or college or wherever and then end up in a job just because somebody's trying to fill a check mark anymore. Yeah, it's a, it's a grind. Mm -hmm. And when you first start out, you're probably not gonna make what you wanna make maybe even five years into it, you may not make what you want to make. But in the space of IT and tech in general, I mean, you can make really good money. Yeah. That's comparable to we like- Yeah, that Steve Buchanan money, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can make doctor, lawyer money, you could make, you know, yeah. I mean, you can do really, really well. You can. But you have to, my strategy <clears throat> and recommendation for folks is that are coming into IT is like, figure out your core. Mm -hmm. Right, get those core skills, whether you are gonna do programming, whether you're on infrastructure side, and you know the stuff I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're infrastructure, you should know the OSI model. You should know how to subnet, right? Stuff yeah. like that. You need to get that core down. Yeah. Once you get that core and you get some experience under your belt, then you specialize. And when you start to specialize, mm -hmm. that's when your career can really take off. Mm -hmm. And in the, the day and time that we're living in, it's, it's important to build a brand. Mm -hmm. and protect Absolutely. that brand, right? So Absolutely. you start to specialize and then kind of build a brand around the area that you specialize in. And there's a lot of different ways to, to kind of do that. For myself, um, I've actually written uh, six books, tech, tech books. And I just, I have one right now that's with the production and it'll be released Very good. Uh, in the next month. We'll have to make sure that we get those covers so we can insert yeah. them into the show. So Yeah, I'll yeah. Def definitely share that right. with you. Please do. Um, another, another avenue is like speaking, right, at different mm -hmm. events and stuff. There's a lot of tech conferences. It's one way to, mm -hmm. to, to expand your brand and also to learn, right? When you have to speak about something or, you know, teach others about something, you need to learn it really well. Yeah, third person teaching, right? Yep. And that's the beauty of a lot of these students. And even in the Minnesota STEM Partnership, our programs, we actually try to have other students teaching other students because that's very important, that whole concept of stewardship and giving back. But then just the effort of having to, to teach somebody else, it makes you think a lot differently. It does. Yeah. It yeah, does. Definitely. And it's important to give back, right? It's important to, to expand and share your, your knowledge. At least that's what I believe is like sharing your knowledge and building that community. Sure. So, you know, our last, you've covered education, you've covered career. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about lifestyle just to see how we spend all that Steve Buchanan money. So Steve, <laughs> what hobbies do you have? Or do you, is, you know, beyond what you do for your, to earn your income, 
you have any other hobbies or things you love to do that you can share with the youth so that they know they can enjoy the fruits of their labor later on? Yeah, I mean, um, I spend most of my spare time like with, with my family, right? Okay. So I like to play basketball, work out. Okay. Um, I like to travel for fun. So like next week, actually this weekend I'm going to Europe. Nice. And I'm going there to speak at a conference, but it's, you know, I'm going to see some different things. Second time in Europe. Sure. Right. So being able to do stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. No, you have a great brand, like you said, protecting that image. And, you know, that's another thing we try to reinforce, too, is when students are out on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. And then now they got TikTok and all this stuff and they're putting up these crazy videos. It's like. Be careful what you post because that yes. stuff is permanent, yep. right? Yep. So when you do come out and you're trying to be that IT professional or that STEAM professional, be a you know a doctor or a scientist, they're going to go back to a couple of TikTok videos that you did doing some stupid stuff, right? So protecting that brand and it, like every day I'm seeing like Steve Buchanan. So yeah, you got to keep relevant, keep current. And you must be covered on every social media platform too, right? So you actually created this brand to be. I'm actually not on like Instagram. I stopped okay. with like Twitter and okay. LinkedIn are my two primary platforms. And those are biz LinkedIn is definitely more businessy for sure. Yeah. But I always catch you on Twitter, especially there's some very interesting things that pop up every once in a while that I try to grab and yeah. you know forward and proliferate. There's a ton of so. ton of stuff on Twitter, and that's the thing, like. Uh, different different platforms you might leverage for different things, mm -hmm. right? If you're a UI tech person, you might leverage like Instagram more than someone like me, mm -hmm. right? Or even Pinterest. Yeah, that's very true. So, well, Steve, thank you. Is there any any parting words? Anything you wanted to say to the students before we go? You've said a lot, but um, just for the students, like um, the tech field is is actually very exciting. There's a lot of different areas you can grow in. This is a field where you know, you can make good money to take care of your family, take care of yourself, turn it into a career. Mm -hmm. um, you could come into tech as a developer and create things, right? There's a lot of different avenues that you can go in this field. Yeah, you don't have to just go down the normal, like, standard path, right? Right, so. right, exactly. Well, thank you. Welcome back. And with me, I have Logan LeCompte. Logan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, every time we talk, there's always something new. And I've gotten into this habit of waiting for surprises to happen during the interviews. So you just shared something with me that blew my mind. What, what company, or can you share what company you work for? Or you have to say major global? I, I could say Fortune 500 company. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> so you work for a major Fortune 500 company. Yes. And what do you do at that company? So I am an IT supervisor um, for global operations um, in, on the weekend side. So what I do is I manage Unix, Intel, network um, and other facets of areas um, on the weekend. Fantastic. So man, you being an old infrastructure guy myself, it was the evenings and weekends was trying to coerce and gently, you know, manipulate the staff to say, okay, how are we going to do this, cover all these hours? So they actually have a weekend shift. Yep, have a full weekend shift. Okay. Do you um, work, how many hours roughly do you work on a weekend? Is it On a weekend, I'll put in about 40 hours on the weekend okay. altogether, yeah. Okay. So how did you get to be where you're at today in terms of your education? I mean, can you give us a little, starting from the relevant things for a high school student, like what did you do when you were young to, to create interest in this? Yeah. You know I have a story, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So when I was younger, I've always had a interest in, so it started off with an interest in hacking, right? I always had an interest in hacking. I don't know if it was from TV shows or whatnot, but something in that direction, right? And so the next logical step was how can I get how, do, how can I learn it mm -hmm. um, and not just like go and randomly type right. something on the internet and do something stupid. Yeah. So um, went ahead and found a program, BDPA. Mm -hmm. Went ahead and joined BDPA. And from that, I started learning my basic programming skills. And with that, I did that all throughout high school, um, which then led me to college where I continued my education, mm -hmm. um, double majored in network security and network system administration. So I got really hands-on experience, went to Dakota State University, which is now, uh, they just built a new cyber lab and everything like that. And so learned very heavily from them. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest 
one of the biggest things was an internship. And nice. that's what I would recommend for anyone who's trying to get into IT mm -hmm. is doing an internship. Because mm -hmm. when I was in school, I started my first, my first job out of, first technical job out of college was uh, doing networking. And I hated networking in college. I thought it was the worst thing in the world, <laughs> right? Horrible. Well, it was all from the person who taught it to you, right? I was being taught by an old army guy who did everything in PowerPoint with no like colors or anything like that. It was just like hard into you. And then getting the internship, all of a sudden you start seeing it from a corporate side and actually real use case scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. So it changes your vision of it. Because if you would have asked me before my internship if I would ever have touched networking, mm -hmm. it would have been absolutely not. Wow. Let's back up just a little bit. I want you to touch on two things. One is um, how you learned the coding and how you got into the internship. And then also, two, drilling down, I want you to talk about the, is it SDSU? Uh, DSU. DSU. Yep. So I know um, Minnesota State has created this cyber range. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's some big cybersecurity activity, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But tell us a little bit about getting an internship because everybody wants to get an internship. Everybody is applying for scholarships and all that. But talk, one, about the title of the degree and you know the specific degree yep. that you got and how it's new and, and what happens there, what services are there. But then also, too, talk a little bit about like how you just got an internship. Right. So the main way that you really get an internship, I would say, is talking to people, making connections, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, I was part of a high school program, BDPA. Mm -hmm. And during that program, we would have um, events where you could go and meet um, people who sponsored BDPA. Mm -hmm. And so doing that through this, I was able to meet some VPs and other stuff like that. Um, from there, just kind of handed out my contact information, started making connections, and got lucky enough where they actually needed to fill in more internships, and they actually went and asked me to apply for an internship. Fantastic. So you had your business card, networking, high business school Business cards, student, everything. On your hustle, on your grind, huh? Yeah. Not knowing what you're getting into. Nope. You just followed the advice of the professionals and said, hey, you need to meet these people. And I think networking and actually the social interaction is being missed because a lot of young people, what they're doing is they're filling out you know, these applications, they're doing the resumes and they're uploading them and they're, you know, in some cases, if they're in that top 10 percentile of, you know, skills, right. then then you're going to get jobs at the major companies, right? And do the, the, we don't care how you behave, we don't care what you look like, but we're going to take you on purely as your skills. But that's, then you have 90% of the rest of the world that has to actually hustle, prepare, shave and you right. know do all, as we both sit here with beards right yeah you know you have to look a certain way and be a certain way in a professional context right so i think you know i think it's important for people to know that you didn't just fall into the internship you put in a lot of years of saturdays right oh, yeah because i think the first the first or second time i met you you were maybe 16 15 16 years old and I remember teaching you how to shut down the computers. And that's the joke. Yeah, yeah. I got to get my little story in here, too, right? <laughs> but no, I, sh I showed you how to do the remote shutdown. And you shut down all the computers in the classroom at a comp local health company. I did. And uh, yeah. And so you were on the top 10 wanted list. But look at where that's bought you today. You know, you're very successful. You're working for a major uh, global Fortune 500 company. Careful not to mention any names. Don't want to break any disclosures. But... You know, for you to come this far and follow that pathway is a testament to your grit, your success, and perseverance. So, in your job, can you tell us a little bit about, real briefly, like what you do as an IT supervisor on those weekends? Yeah, so a lot of what I do is kind of I oversee ongoing projects for mm -hmm. the most part. Um, and so, really, what I tend to focus on is where can we go next? Um, I'm someone who I don't want to see a repeating problem. Mm -hmm. If we have something and it alerts multiple times, why is it alerting multiple times? You know, we are now in a day of age where we can do a lot of automation and we can do a lot of programming to get around those barriers. So we really are looking at, okay, let's identify the issue. And then the next step is how can we tackle it so we never see this issue again? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who play too much catch up 
Um, and so you're just continuously tackling these same problems, not mm -hmm. letting people grow, right? Mm -hmm. So the main goal is to go ahead and tackle these problems um, and go ahead so they don't creep back up, which is allows the team to grow and learn more things. Fantastic, fantastic. So you're working weekends. You're, you don't get a lot of weekends off, I'm taking it. I don't it. get a lot of weekends off. A lot of off. weekends off. So you have the, the typical working stiff days, right? Monday through Thursday or so? Yep, so I work Friday mm -hmm. through Monday. Friday through Monday. So Tuesday through Thursday, you're going buck wild with all this money that you got. You know, all this excess capital. All right, the, got the, the three-day weekend. Big ballers, yeah. you got the three weekend. So what do you do for fun? For fun, I travel. Really? I like to travel. Okay. Yep, I like to travel and I like, yeah. Like traveling. So where's so, your favorite place to go? Uh, so the past two years, we've gone to, um, we actually just got back from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Okay. okay. Yep. So nice spend a week right down that. there. Yeah. So went there, got to come back to snow. So it was great. Yeah. Well, Logan, thank you very much for your time, man. We appreciate you coming in. I know uh, today is not a work day, so this works out great. Yes. And we're looking forward to you. Uh, and thank you again for this summer working with the kids with the cybersecurity and, and, you know, coming out to speak and talk. And at least we have you lined up to do some other things in the future. So Yes, of course. We appreciate it, Logan. So. Awesome. Welcome back. I'm here with Tyrone Spratt, the CIO of Minute, Minnesota IT Information Technology Services for the state of Minnesota. Am I correct in that title? You have that correct. I work with specific agencies um, for the state of Minnesota. Fantastic. Yeah. So maybe elaborate a little bit more on what you do. Did I, you know, what is what is your career like? What is my career like? Well, my career is. Uh, uh, been far stretched. Um, getting into information technology was never really a goal mm -hmm. um, for me. Um, growing up, what I wanted to do was really to make a difference. Um, and I found that one of the ways that I could make a difference is by working within government. Mm -hmm. um, I, I grew up poor. Um, I relied on a lot of different government services to get to keep the house warm, mm -hmm. um, the food, the, the bread that mm -hmm. I ate um, was a was a, I was a beneficiary of what the government could do for me, and so I always thought um, um, I can remember going down um, as a little kid down to a welfare office with my mm -hmm. mom, and seeing how mm -hmm. that that really what I can remember down on uh, it's on Franklin Avenue uh, mm -hmm. about Second and Franklin I think it's about where in Minneapolis, okay. and walking into that office and just feeling like man this this is a place that I don't ever want to be, this isn't what I'm not, this isn't going to be me when right. I grow up. Right. And that was a moment in time where I really felt that it's all right, all right, I know that I have to do something better for myself, but then I'm going to um, try to contribute to all of the little Tyrones mm -hmm. um, to say, all right, if you got to consume state services, they're going to be the best that we can possibly deliver. So um, I kind of moved uh, with that motivation, if you will, um, into that a variety of different um, jobs. But currently right now I'm the uh, CIO. I support IT um, for the Department of Agriculture, Department of Labor and Industry, and the Board of Animal Health. Um, and basically if you, um, the IT systems that me and my team have built, support, manage, um, do everything from seed um, to uh, uh, food seed um, to the food that you eat. Mm -hmm. um, if you work in any building or any, if you're employed, OSHA and all of those rules and standards are systems that we've built and support. Um, if you're hurt on the job, the systems mm -hmm. that we provide um, also support um, you as an injured worker. Um, we do construction and code licensing and uh, mm -hmm. work around that. So if you build houses, if you, you're a plumber, an electrician, you have a boiler, mm -hmm. um, we inspect, we make sure that that work is um, going well. And then we manage um, animal disease as well, is what the uh, Board of Animal Health is responsible for, to make sure that the animals that um, are on farms and different places are healthy, um, and that we catch diseases and try to eradicate that. So that's, um, that's the stuff that my team works on. So how, how would a young person that's sitting in the classroom uh, thinking about what areas of technology or science or mathematics, STEAM or STEM, um, that they would get into, what type of jobs usually are, are good fits for students either coming out of high school and or if you can elaborate on what type of maybe education they should consider if they want to come and work for a team such as yours? Um, the education, um, I'll tell a little bit about my journey from uh, education. I went to school at night. 
Um, so I was married, I had young kids, and I was doing school at night. Mm -hmm. um, I actually worked a part-time job as well at the Mall of America. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to school and I had a full-time job. And I had no idea how I managed to get through that. <laughs> I can tell by the energy, you, you did manage <laughs> I it. I did, I managed it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I started my college, uh, my, uh, my undergrad at Minnesota State, uh, or Metro State, I'm sorry, uh -huh. um, in 1989. Mm -hmm. I got my undergrad in 2007, mm -hmm. and I finished my master's degree in 2011. So what is that? Uh, 22 years mm -hmm. of taking night classes, with, but I went to school as my budget allowed. Um, so what I would tell the youth is that there's a variety of ways to get what you want. Um, my way is, uh, my journey has been maybe more um, untraditional. Um, I didn't go away to school for four or five years and um, go to, through that path. Um, what I did was really take my passion for public service and looked for opportunities um, to advance my career either by developing the skill set. Um, as I tell um, folks that I mentor right now, I, don't, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up, hmm. um, but I'm trying to learn different things so whenever I figure that out, I'm going to be the strongest candidate for that position or job. And when you interview me, I'm getting it um, because I prepared myself for it. So I think it's through your experiences, it's through how you volunteer and opportunities to volunteer and engage in your communities um, and really honing just what you're good at. And then once you understand what you're good at, now start to take courses or classes that also kind of augment that so that you can compete. Um, it's really a competition is how I think about it. I want to win. Um, so how do I win? I got to have more skills, more ability, and ability to get things done than the next guy. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that's in IT or in any other field, um, organizations want people who get stuff done. Absolutely. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's the, the attitude that's, uh, that's helped me along the way. I would agree, and I think a lot of the people that we interview here, they have to have that passion and that intrinsic or internal drive to be able to pursue this, because it's like anything, uh, medicine isn't for everybody, technology right. may not be for everybody, right. but if you have that knack and that special passion to succeed, uh, I think it's a great opportunity, but I'm, I'm absolutely impressed that, was there any time when you were young, like you said, you didn't want to do be in these situations which could be embarrassing or demeaning or you know or just you know you have a sense of pride that you know that you have more to offer this world mm -hmm. was there any particular point in time in that that uh, younger age where you saw technology like how did you go from like this young boy into like, oh, I like technology. Is there a particular story there? Um, there's not a really a story. Um, I probably, it goes back to Y2K, actually. Um, mm -hmm. When I first started um, at the state of Minnesota, I was uh, an eligibility uh, worker for the Minnesota Care Program. So oh. if you applied for that program, Medicare, yeah. I did the application and, um, and it was fairly straightforward work. And I'm like, all right, I got into the state. That's good. Uh -huh. um, I started networking and one of my strategies around networking was really around volunteering. So mm -hmm. If there was a little group that was going to get together sure. to solve this problem or this group of volunteers yeah. around that. I went, oh, yeah, I'll volunteer. I'll lead it. Yeah. And the idea there is that I, I always felt that I could implement and get stuff done. So if I volunteered for a group, I could organize it, mm -hmm. get people to go, oh, that guy gets stuff done. Sure enough, I got the opportunity to kind of do those things, but it was Y2K that um, where the department was going through all of its different, this is at the Department of Human mm -hmm. Services, going through all of its systems and, and seeing what anything would be sure. impacted. And so I was looking through green bar paper, which some of the oh, kids yeah, today won't even I know. Can relate. Just yeah. pie, I mean, just Google stacks, green bar. just yeah. going through it yeah. and circling and whatnot. Um, but that work, I was pretty efficient at that, and it gave me an opportunity then to actually work in the healthcare policy side of things, mm -hmm. where they're like, all right, if you can understand this systems we have to implement healthcare policies into technology to support mm -hmm. that okay so I was kind of a go-between with the policy quicker. and the okay. IT folks to say here's what the policy folks mean IT folks understand what the IT folks right policy folks this is what the IT folks mean and I was kind of that bridge that translator yeah. into that um, but again was able to get things done um, that led to some opportunities at uh, human services around project management mm -hmm. before project management was really kind of a thing. It was like, all right, how do we get stuff done? Mm -hmm. um, so it was in the early days of project management, uh, got an opportunity to lead a lot of uh, projects that way, um, then got a promotion opportunity to run the entire project management office, actually created for the Department of Human Services. Again, Incredible. all under that, um, mm -hmm. I would say that 
I'm an implementer. I just get stuff done. I right. um, didn't have an IT background. I have an MBA um, and an undergrad in business. I don't have an IT degree. I have no IT certifications. Mm -hmm. I'm a project management professional, okay. um, and I bring all of that to the table to make Absolutely. the work happen. Yeah, and you know, I've seen a shift in corporate America too, at least for the major financial services companies that, that I've been a part of, is that shift where the business analyst really evolved into a technical analyst and then mm -hmm. they're actually that bridge, like you said. Yeah. So the point of saying all that is to say that you can come at into an IT career directly, getting those certifications or whatever, or in some of our viewers on SPNN actually are uh, re-entering or you know they're retrofitting their careers yeah, and like yeah, yeah. oh I saw a guy who was doing cybersecurity mm -hmm. oh there's a cyber range and all mm -hmm. this stuff at Men State but hey I'd like to really learn more about this mm -hmm. and so you can come into the IT industry from many different perspectives and angles absolutely but for the youth I think it's important to know that um, even though you have many end points of entry it also leads to a very lucrative career right and you have a lot of benefits and I know the first time that we met we were actually introduced by a previous guest on the show yeah. Steve Buchanan yeah right for the youth yeah. it was either robotics or uh, he was doing a seminar or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he was doing a Fortnite or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Fortnite great. yeah it was a great on Azure yep yep, yep. exactly uh -huh. it was a fun time so I also know you have heavy involvement when making sure that the youth have options and opportunities in their yeah. life and their career so let's talk a little bit about on the final portion of your lifestyle mm -hmm. and if that includes volunteerism that's great mm -hmm. if you could share a little bit about how you as a you know CIO yeah, you know yeah. what does a CIO do for fun <laughs> right what do you actually do you know do for fun you know I, I I joke if I could make enough money I would do this um, which is youth basketball okay. I coach youth basketball um, I've been coaching Geez, I think my first team was probably about 20 years or so ago. Okay. Um, I got a team right now um, that none of the kids are my kids. So um, it's an opportunity, I think, in the community that I live in. There's not a lot of people of color. Mm -hmm. um, and so I like to take advantage of the fact that there are all kinds of kids that would benefit from getting exposure mm -hmm. to positive role models, yeah. regard regardless of color. Um, so I continue to coach um, basketball, and that's really one of my, my true passions. Um, I've also done a lot of work with my boys' um, elementary school as being on the uh, parent-teacher organization. Mm -hmm. um, so I served as the chair, the financial lead, a number of different roles there. And what that, again, gave me an opportunity as a person of color is to be involved in the school. All the principals know me. All the administrators know me. They all I right? walk, walk into the school. They know, oh, there's Mr. Spratt, and that's mm. Isaac and Sam's dad. It's like, yeah. yep, that's exactly what I want. And your eyes are on my kids like I got my eyes on your kids <laughs> because it takes a community, really, yeah. too, to try to advance that. So I really care a lot about um, trying to make uh, my community better um, by contributing and doing what I can through um, either volunteering at the school or preferred is on that basketball court. That is beautiful. Well, we certainly thank you for taking your time. I'm glad that we could fit into your schedule. And uh, thank you for joining this episode of Altitude.
Welcome back. And with me, I have what I affectionately call Dr. Kirkfleet. Dr. Kirkfleet, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Dr. Wolf. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You know, we have to support each other on these <laughs> missions, these, these long education pathways yeah. to uh, success, right? So, do you mind if I call you Greg? Yeah, just call me Greg. Okay, that's good. So, Greg, today we're going to talk a little bit about your education, your career, and your lifestyle, mm -hmm. you know, and how you got to be where you're at. So, I want you to tell everybody what you do today, but then I want to make that brief and come way back to the beginning, and let's start about how you got to where you're at today. Got it. Um, well, I have two different jobs. I am a uh, senior director for Target Corporation. Um, I run all of their HR technology. So what that means is all of their staffing, recruiting, hiring um, from talent management, all of payroll, all of um, social collaboration, mm. every learning, every bit of HR technology that we use at Target Corp, all the way down to Microsoft, runs through my team. Within my team, I have product owners product directors and product owners that report to me mm -hmm. that run scrum teams, mm -hmm. agile scrum teams, and I also mm -hmm. have an HR tech operations team and a reporting team. Fantastic. That is an incredible role, and at Target, I know that um, it's fairly significant. About how many staff do you have that you manage? I have a, a team of between 45 and 50. Okay. Um, globally, Technical. technically in the U.S., and uh, a few team members in India as well. Fantastic. So here you are, Dr. Greg Kirkley, and you're sitting here in front of me uh, with an incredibly high-level job within a major corporation. Mm -hmm. What is it, Fortune 50? Yeah, Fortune 50, Somewhere Fortune 30. There. I think we're a little bit higher than that. But. but like many of our other guests, they all have a story. Mm -hmm. So what's your story? When you were a kid, did you always imagine getting into technology and doing this type of work? Or maybe can you share a little bit about how you got here? No, actually, I, I also teach college, too, um, at oh. a university in the Twin Cities called St. Mary's. Um, initially, when I was a kid, I wasn't really thinking about technology at all. I was actually thinking about running the street. Um, I was worried more about chasing girls. I was worried more about being the tough kid, and I grew up in St. Paul, so uh, I was focused on that, and I wasn't focused on my career. But I had an amazing mentor um, that actually stuck with me when I got into trouble in school, and he kept reinforcing that I could do more in life, mm -hmm. and kept, kept me focused on giving me a different opportunity. So in my high school career, I actually was able to intern in law firms. So I was initially thinking I was going to be a lawyer mm -hmm. when on the, after I got done chasing girls and doing my own personal thing. You make a lot of money yeah, as a lawyer, uh, right? Oh, oh definitely. Big cars. Definitely. Yeah. But um, through that experience, I ended up um, having a child really young in life and then just really got focused. Uh, got focused on a career. And I had a mentor that took me under their wing. and. Uh, introduced me to technology. And as I was working my way, trying to support my family, mm -hmm. at a very young age, I ended up doing some desktop help desk uh, support, got an opportunity to do some side networking, um, and then got an opportunity to code in COBOL and Java through Y2K, which was a, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a crazy time, but it was, I was doing desktop networking, COBOL, all of that. You could wear multiple different hats back then, and I was able to learn a ton. Um, after, um, during that same time, I was finishing up my bachelor's degree um, and, and started, then started my master's degree. Um, I have a bachelor's um, in information technology and business management. I have a master's degree in information technology emphasis in project management. Went to law school, a little bit of a black eye on my academic career, didn't finish law school, um, but then have a, was able to get a doctorate degree in organizational leadership. And throughout that entire time period, I was working full time in IT, from desktop networking to then being a formal programmer, um, programming in .NET and Java, mm -hmm. then shifted into leading in a PMO organization, mm -hmm. and then going to my current organization running HR systems. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, a, that's an incredible story to realize that even though you weren't focused in on technology or STEM at that point mm -hmm. in time, I don't even think STEM was a thing. It was always no. embedded within our classes, yeah. right? When we did go to class. But 
that you were able to, to change that based on those that change in lifestyle, that change in responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's really an incredible testament to you and, and the grit and the perseverance that you have to make sure that, you know, you're caring for your family's success. So to the students that are out there, they, you know, it may, it's never too late, I mm -hmm. guess is really the primary message, right? Yeah. It's never too late to make a correction in that. Once you find something that interests you, but I think one of the Im impressive things is you had somebody that actually mentored you mm -hmm. and you had an opportunity for them to keep keep staying on you where a lot of students don't have those. And I know that um, we have talked in part of your uh, many philanthrop philanthropic um, outlets that you do, um, I know that you actually help mentor others and you actually have wrestling background as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, you spend a lot of time coaching and helping other students yeah. get ahead. So, you know, much applause to you on that. Um, so we've talked a little bit about how you got to where you're at, you know, what you've done in your career, but tell us a little bit about like all this responsibility that you have at that large organization. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do for fun? I mean, besides, you know, where do you spend all your money, Greg? That's what we want to know. You got the, <laughs> the doctorate, you've got the, you know, the yeah. big job and doing really well for yourself and congratulations to you. Before I talk about what I do for fun mm -hmm. real quick, um, one thing I would say is it's about the opportunity. So as the, your, your audience is thinking about what do I want to do next, mm -hmm. how do you take advantage of the opportunity? I would have never thought that I would be sitting in HR today and running an HR function where I've had opportunities to be an HR business partner or a generalist. Mm -hmm. And I started my career in IT. Mm -hmm. So always mm -hmm. take advantage of the opportunities in front of you and don't be intimidated by, I don't know how to do that. Because if you have the right That's mentor, if you have the right connections, you can always learn how to do anything, but believe in yourself first. And once you believe in yourself, you'll be able to accomplish the world. That's an incredible message. So from doing for fun, um, Besides uh, chasing my adult children around and trying to uh, stay ahead of them, um, I'm, a, I'm a learner. I'm a lifelong learner. So even though my job isn't coding today, mm -hmm. I still code on the side. Even though uh, my job isn't doing looking at networks or looking at different IT strategies, I still do that because I like to learn. I like to read. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I also work out. I um, have a, I run at least three miles, um, three miles a day. Sometimes I go up to eight miles of cardio a day and I lift. So I enjoy lifting weights, I enjoy doing cardio because I'm trying to be completely healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm also looking at my life as this is my new 20s. I'm living in my 40s and my 20s. So um, trying to live a healthy lifestyle and uh, really just enjoy every moment I have. Fantastic. I appreciate your time, sir. Well, thank you coming out Definitely. on this episode of Altitude. Definitely. Thank you.